pineapple under the sea. SpongeBob SquarePants! Absorbent and yellow and porous is he. SpongeBob SquarePants! If nautical nonsense be something you wish. SpongeBob SquarePants! Then drop on the deck and flop like a fish. SpongeBob SquarePants! Ready? SpongeBob SquarePants! SpongeBob SquarePants! SpongeBob SquarePants! SpongeBob SquarePants! Ha ha! Good morning, New Prague Children's. I'm Willem. I'm Patrick. And I'm Alex. And, and we're, we're this, this week's, week's news, news anchors. anchors. To start off, some of our upcoming activities include hockey, basketball, and gymnastics, starting on Monday the 14th. Check out this year's musical in the auditorium. Some are available on November 18th at 7.30, the 19th at 7.30, the 20th at 2 and 26th at 7.30, and lastly, the 27th at 2. Check out the activities office for more dates and activities. Now let's over to Zach, Preston, and Bryce to talk about harvest season. Our town celebrates harvest season once a year, also known as the Zinke. Here's a word from our local farmers about how their harvest has been this year. Hi, I'm Mike Greenland. I'm 28 years old. Um, Hi Mike, how's it going? How long have you been harvesting for? Uh, I've been harvesting for a little over 10 years. And what piece of equipment do you run during the harvest season? Uh, the past few years I've been running a tillage tractor. What does this, what does the tillage tractor do to help prevent harvesting? Or like help out harvest season, I guess. Uh, it turns the dirt for next year's planting. And what and where, or where and what farm do you work for? Uh, JTK Farms out of Jordan, Minnesota. Approximately how many acres, acres do you harvest every year? Um, about 2,200. And then approximately how many hours do you put in a week in the field? I'd say about 85 to 90 hours. Perfect, thanks Mike. My name is Eddie Kubish. All right, thanks Eddie. Um, how long have you been farming for? Uh, probably since I was, I've been helping out on the farm since I was probably 12, but I started really getting into equipment and doing a lot of work out here since I was probably 13, 14. Uh, how long has your family been into farming? Uh, grandpa started the farm here in 1938, but they've been farming since grandpa was little. How do you balance school and farming? Uh, it depends on the year. If we're really busy, I'll take off and I'll take off school a little bit. Otherwise, I just come out here after school and meet when I'm done with my other job and try and get as much hours as I can. It depends if we're busy though, I'll take off and get it done as fast as I can. So. What do you do with the crops? Uh, so we used to store, or we store all of our beans here and then we'll sell them in the next year in like July. And then with our corn, they'll haul it right out of the field and they'll take it to the elevator and we'll sell it right away. Uh, but back in the day, Grep used to keep all of it for animals and then loading out of animals. We just get rid of the corn now, right away. Okay, okay. What is your favorite and least favorite thing about farming? I don't know, probably my least favorite. Sometimes having to deal with people on the farm and when we don't know what to do or something just not going our way, we're having big problems, but favorite thing, probably just getting, probably just being on the field and working on stuff. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you, Eddie. Yep. Thanks, guys. Up next is something a little more sad. Yeah, it's unfortunate that in the U.S., when a school shooting happens, we have to ask which one. That is the sad reality. This stuff happens way too often. Speaking of which, here's Brooke, Eric, and Haley with a story on the St. Louis school shooting. Have you heard of the St. Louis school shooting in Missouri? No, I have not heard of this shooting. 
No, I have not heard of the St. Louis, Missouri school shooting. I have heard about the St. Louis uh, school shooting. Unfortunately, I have not. Orlando Harris, who was a 19-year-old male, was an active shooter at the St. Louis, Missouri High School. He killed two and wounded several others. Harris wanted to buy a gun and was flagged by an FBI background check and he was denied access to buy a gun from a licensed dealer. Harris was still legally able to buy a gun through a private seller who had originally purchased the firearm from a licensed dealer. Harris's family was worried about his mental health and when his mom found the AR-15 in his room, she called the police. Missouri does not have the red flag law, which is the police's right to take someone's gun if they are at risk to themselves or other people. So the best they could do was give his gun to a known third party family. Hi, I'm AJ Rivers, a senior at New Prague High School. My name is Tom Wetchka. I'm the assistant principal here at New Prague High School. My name is Lindsay Schutte, and I teach English language arts here at the high school. My name is Lawson Eller, and I'm in the 10th grade. Do you think our school talks to the students or administrative enough about school shootings? I think it should be talked about more because it's a real problem and it's affecting us every day. And we just need to make sure that we're ready when, you know, a tragic event like that happens and we just gotta know what to do. I think our school does a good job, but there can always be more preparation. So I think our school does enough simply because there's this delicate balance that you don't want to live in fear all the time, but you do want to be informed and you want to be prepared. I definitely think we could talk more about like the shootings in general, like half of us didn't even know that this was a shooting at all. So we could just inform the students more. Even though his gun was supposed to be given to a third party family, Harris still marched into his old high school with 600 rounds of ammunition and shot and killed Alexandria Bell, who was 15, and a teacher, Jean Kuska, who was 61. Do you think you personally be prepared if we went into a lockdown? As students, I believe we are prepared as we do many lockdown drills and we know where to go in the case of an emergency. So I do think that we are being as preventative and as responsive as possible by having different procedures that staff run through that we practice with students. So we are doing the best we can but there's always that element of surprise that I don't think you can confidently say that you are 100% prepared always. It's a really good question. Uh, I do, I do feel that we would be prepared. Our staff has been trained in how to react and what to do. Police arrived at the school minutes after they got the call and got involved in a gun battle with Harris. Harris was brought to the hospital and later pronounced dead. Okay, and last, do you have any like final words for students, teachers, any administrative? But I would like for there to be like more security measures inside of the school so a shooter can be contained in, you know, in that event. Yeah, on the topic of school shootings, I, it's just a really sad reality that this is even a topic that we talk about, that we read about, that we see in the news, but it is very much real world. And so we need to be prepared. I think school districts do the best that they can to prepare for this really scary situation. Just educate yourself and make yourself more aware of what's going on around you. It truly is sickening to hear about things like that. While most people think video games can cause violence in people, causing them to lash out like that. I know my parents have said that before. Speaking of video games, here's Alex, Nathan, Cody, and Damien to fill us in on the world of gaming. 
I'm fairly certain everyone watching this has heard of it in some shape or form, whether it be on console, PC, or mobile, single player, multiplayer, or co-op. It cemented itself as a big part of our world and the entertainment we absorb. All right, I am here with Jacob. All right, Jacob, what platform do you play video games on? Um, Xbox. All right, I am here with Aiden Henkel. All right, Aiden, what platform do you play video games on? Uh, PC. All right, I am here with... Ethan. All right, Ethan, what platform do you play video games on? PC. All right, I am here with... Cage. What platform do you play video games on? Xbox. All right, I am here with... Sasha. All right, and what platform do you play video games on, Sasha? Xbox. Video games come in all shapes and sizes, but some games stand above the others as being more popular than the rest. Some of the those, according to some of your fellow students, being Minecraft, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Overwatch 2, Rocket League, and the overrated Fortnite. What games do you think are most popular around the high school for video games? Oh, probably, honestly, probably Fortnite. I'm not going to lie. Minecraft 2, though, that's pretty popular. Um, Call of Duty, that one's definitely popular, especially the new Modern Warfare. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. I think Call of Duty is pretty popular now, too. Uh, what video game do you think is most popular around the high school? Around the high school, I got no clue, but Overwatch 2 is where it's at. And then what games do you think are most popular around the high school? Um, probably Minecraft or Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 just came out, so it's been pretty popular so far. What kind of video games do you think are popular nowadays? Uh, maybe Fortnite, Minecraft, Rocket League even. And then what video games do you think are most popular around the high school? Uh, Fortnite's pretty popular, and like Call, Call of Duty, probably. As stated before, there are plenty of ways to play video games these days, with the most common and accessible being either Xbox or PlayStation. But there is another debatably better option to console, PC. PC offers better processing power, higher FPS, and easier access to upgrades, to name a few perks. And I am totally not biased by this in any way. Why do you play on Xbox? Um, I play a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, sometimes I'll throw in a little Minecraft, sometimes I don't know. Alright. Awesome. Why do you play on PC? It's the only good one. Why do you play on PC? Um, it's just convenient for me because I have a computer at home. Um, I, I have an Xbox and a PlayStation, but my PC just runs smoother, so. Yeah. Uh, do you like Xbox? Yeah, I do. Why would you say Xbox is the best? Uh, because you can talk with people. You probably can on other things, but overall, I like the format of it, and yeah. So why do you play on Xbox? Xbox is the best, so... Now, there is plenty more to talk about with gaming, but we are unfortunately out of time here. The world of gaming seems to be getting bigger and has become more mainstream in this last decade, and will presumably get bigger. The only question is how big. I guess we'll see. Pretty cool, guys. I know I love video games myself. I could say the same about myself. What about you, Alex? I enjoy them from time to time. Well, anyways, if you're someone who enjoys more physical types of games, I think this new product I heard about will be for you. Are you talking about always make the shot? Of course I am. I heard Jimmy Coy and Lake could tell us more about that. <laughs> Do your friends call you names like Russell Westbrook because you can't make a shot? Well, now say goodbye to those nicknames. Introducing the Nadia Ball, an all-new basketball that always goes in. You'll never miss again. Shoot from anywhere, and it goes in. Look, it goes in every time. Please consider your doctor before use, as it may result in a potential RSV drip machine with extremely close battery life. And many car conditions work with normal cost. COVID 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and 29. Our connection money is no more potential. Lots of lights going on. In your point of loss of the field and loss of care. Maybe in speedy sanity. Chances of developing sleep and loss of risk. Wow! 
I'll never miss a shot again after discovering the product. You'd still need more help than that, Willem. Oh, whatever. I could make the varsity team if I tried. Speaking of the varsity team, I heard some winter sports are starting up soon. Now there's your chance to make the team, Willem. Yeah, yeah. Here's Johnny, Riley, and Peyton to fill us in on upcoming Trojan activities. Trojan fall sports are coming to an end and winter sports are beginning. Last week, the girls' hockey had their first game of the season versus Delano on Thursday. Girls' swim and dive also competed in the section meet Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. There are still a lot of winter sports that will start soon. On Monday the 14th, boys' hockey, boys' and girls' basketball, and girls' gymnastics officially begin. On Tuesday the 15th, girls' hockey has a game versus Prior Lake at home. Girls' hockey also has a game on Thursday the 17th against Hutch. There will be more winter sports games and events in the upcoming weeks. Go support your favorite team this winter, and go Trojans. Before we go, good luck making varsity, Willem. I know you'll need it with that all the shots you miss. At least I have to always make a shot. That's true. Mm -hmm.